everyone it is monday evening now and i've genuinely just been working all day on the computer i haven't even got out my pajamas i just got so in depth and involved in what i was doing i've basically been setting up some black friday deals for my business so i've been creating like graphics for social media i've been creating a email to go out to everyone who has agreed to email communications from me i've been setting up um, a text that will be going out to everyone who's agreed to text communications and that's all kind of scheduled and ready to go for next Monday and I just really enjoyed creating it all like the email is really fancy like it flashes and stuff I really like it and I then got really involved in the blog post that went up today if you want to see that it's a review of the Fenty foundation and why it's now part of my professional kit I can leave a link to that down below as well so I got that up and sent that out everywhere and promoted it and yeah <laughs> i just got really really into what i was doing and i was taking blog photos and editing them and stuff so <laughs> i think i should probably go and wash i haven't washed my hair since friday it's gone really like when i don't wash it for a few days it goes really big like it just kind of stays in that position um but it doesn't exactly look very good so i need to go and bath and wash my hair and honestly that's just my day to day so <laughs> sorry about that um, but the rest of the week is pretty busy. I do have a lot going on, so I will see you for the rest of the week. Hello everyone, I'm back from CBT today. If you didn't know that I started um, a CBT group class last week, then I would definitely recommend going back and watching my vlog last week because I did talk a lot about first week and I think I'm going to do this every week until the end of the course and just talk about my experience with it and the kind of things we discussed and the things that we're doing. I thought maybe it could help someone, maybe it might encourage someone else to try CBT if they're feeling depressed or low. So yeah, today I'm talking about week two of CBT and it was very interesting. We kind of covered some of the things we did last week with regards to those short-term behaviours that we do that don't have long-term benefits and perhaps perhaps even make our depression worse because um they're not very good behaviors to do like they don't they don't help and so we spoke about that um and we kept a log every week i think i spoke about it last week that we had to talk about um what we were doing morning afternoon evening and rate it as a feeling out of 10 um and through doing that people were able to see um what time of the day was maybe worse for them what they were doing that might be making them feel worse and for me a definite trigger is on a morning and it seemed to be like a running thing and the therapist did say that it's a very common thing for the morning to be a very hard struggle or milestone to get past in the day not milestone that's the wrong word um a hard like hump to get over um, because a recurring issue with most people with depression is that they don't sleep or they have disturbed sleep, insomnia and things like that so they are of course going to be more tired on a morning um, and getting into that slump of or a habit of laying in bed a bit longer not getting up on a morning, not wanting to get up um, it's hard to overcome that so one of my goals for the next week is to just set an alarm for half an hour earlier than I would usually get up and that's just for this week and then I can slowly build on that rather than one day just going right I'm gonna get up at seven today because that that is quite a hard thing to do for someone who's in a habit someone who's depressed someone who's exhausted to just randomly start getting up early so she said it would be good to slowly do it instead and then it's more realistic it's more achievable and when you're able to get up a little bit earlier you feel better rather than having a, having an alarm set for extremely early much earlier than you used to and then not feeling like you're able to get up so i thought that was really helpful for me <sighs> fingers crossed i can do it because i hate i hate feeling like i've wasted the day and that's another thing as, as well as she said that sometimes at the time when you're laid in bed you feel comfortable you feel cozy but then later on you feel guilty like i feel guilty that i've slept in and done nothing um, so that was one of my goals and it's basically about replacing these behaviours that we do that might make us feel better in the moment um, but they're not good long term so slowly replacing them with better more positive more rewarding behaviours that maybe might feel difficult to start with but 
when we get into a habit of doing it, the long-term benefits are far better. The other thing is I want to, this was something I set myself that I spoke to her about and she feels like it could be a good thing. Um, because I used to be an active person, I used to be very like out there going on walks all the time, doing things all the time with my dogs and I miss being that person and that is a goal of mine to achieve again is to become that active, dog loving, outgoing, like outdoor loving person again. Um, so my goal for the next week is to just go on a nice walk around the block and I know that seems silly. <laughs> to just go for a walk around the block um, but it could help me a lot so those are my two things to do for the next week and the other thing I also thought would help is because another value that I have is um, being social and also just spending time with loved ones so I want to do like at least one activity a week even if it's just a little free thing with either Eric or a friend or someone important to me so that's another thing they also talked about the fact that it's easy for someone to say uh, depression can be solved by doing things every day, exercise, socialising, just doing things to make yourself feel better. But there are some real barriers to people doing that. For example, money. Not everyone can afford to even just go for a coffee with their friends. Um, especially like a lot of people with depression have depression as an underlying cause from something else like other health issues or other kind of like issues in their life um that might be stopping them from being able to do things like health for example is one of them that would have been something in the past that affected me not so much anymore um but yeah and also that different people have different values and different things that are important to them so for example exercise and going for a run every day might be really important to one person because they really value their health they really value their physical um their physical appearance or their physical health and stuff like that but for other people that's not a value to them they have other values and so exercise and every day is isn't a motivation like they're not motivated to do it um so there was like and it's non-exhaustive obviously like there's so many things that can be value valuable to each individual person but there's like a little list and some of the things were family social life um hobbies arts and culture creativity career um being a parent like things like that or like personal growth, education, all these things can be valuable to someone and it's about finding the things that you value as a person and working on them rather than having this um, blanket approach to depression like if you if one if you just tell someone well you need to exercise and go to the gym every day you need to do this every day and then you'll feel better when actually like that might not be something that they value um, so that was really interesting. I really liked that they're doing a more individual approach, even though it's a group session, we're all working on individual things along the way, which I'm definitely finding really helpful because over the past year, you might have seen in my vlogs that I'm on and off at the gym. I have been on, a, on and off at the gym because I always feel like I need to go to the gym. That's something that people do. I need to exercise. I need to work out, but I never keep it up. And that's why I'm just not motivated to do it because I don't find it valuable to me as a person. There are so many other things that are of value to me. So yeah, it just makes sense and it's clicking. And I'm hoping that the next week will be better for me with implementing these small achievable changes. That's another thing that they really kept trying to like reiterate is that they need to be achievable. Start small, work your way up to get better. I do, I really liked it this week, um, I feel much better from leaving, from leaving the class, I feel like I want to do better so hopefully I can share this journey with other people so that they might seek help if they need it or even try this group CBT class because I was really wary at first and so far it's only the second week and already I feel like I'm getting something from it, um, so yeah. <laughs> that was my experience today. I'm back home now. I've got my a few things to sort out um, before I leave tonight. But Eric and I are going to go to the cinema. I think we're seeing The Nutcracker. I'm not sure because he booked it. I also want to start doing that review every single week like I uh, discussed in my last week's vlog. So Eric and I will be sitting down later to discuss the film. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't walk away from me. Don't walk away from me. So we've just been to see the Nutcracker and the Four Realms at the cinema. It's a Disney film. And I said last week that we would review films, so here we are. You can finish it. I'm sorry, it's so cold. <laughs> it's so cold and tired. But... What if that makes you yawn? You're being tired, yeah. I've been mean being cold, because you said cold at first. I'm so cold! <sighs> I'm freezing like. So, did you like it or did you not like it? I liked it. But there was bits in it that I was like, I'm not a fan. Or it's not for me. Oh wait, quickly. There will be spoilers, so if you don't want to see spoilers, then skip ahead. I'll put a, like a little time of what you can skip to down here. God, you should just listen and then <laughs> you don't have to go to the cinema. That's good. <laughs> I liked it. Uh, why? I thought it was a really good children's film. It is aimed for children. It's a Disney film. It was a. magical. Is it a 12A? I think so. I think it's a 12A. I don't think it's a PG. Because she says the word poo. That's not true. I'm sure it's 12 I don't think it's a U. We'll check this and I'll put it on the screen. Um, but I thought it was magical. I thought it looked really cool. I thought it's a good film for the run-up to Christmas. It was very festive. Did you think it was Christmassy? The Nutcracker is always Well, I know it's based at Christmas, <laughs> but like, I didn't really feel like it was Christmassy. Like, the odd bit. Like, not the, the whole overarching... The overarching story isn't like this is Christmas, mm -hmm. but it is set during Christmas time. It's a, it's about like Christmas toys and the Nutcracker and the sugar plum fla the sugar plum fairy. I couldn't speak there. Um, oh. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's Christmassy. Mm. You feel Christmassy now after watching it though. Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. The actors, there's a lot of actors that I didn't realize that were going to be in it. The weirdest thing was Omid Jalili and Jack Whitehall. That was a bit odd seeing them too. And, uh, they were kind of gods. more like cameos, weren't they? Well, they were kind of comic relief, but like they were only in it for about on screen time about three minutes. Yeah, and they were actually like funny. I wish they were in it more. They, were, they weren't that funny. I thought they were. I, mean, I love them. Did you know I saw them live there? Uh, and I didn't really think he was that funny. And Jack Whitehall, I thought he was bigger than that. I liked Kira Knightley. Kira Knightley was an annoying, uh, had an annoying voice. I'll act like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was, I'm the sugar plum fairy. <laughs> like, I quite that liked constant. the. No, I quite liked her character. I like that they did a twist on the sugar plum fairy, and they made her. If you don't want to know spoilers, don't listen. Um, but they made her the the bad guy, the, the villain. villain. Um, I mean, it was obvious it was going to be the villain if you've watched any movie out there. Yeah, well, it did make it obvious, like when she stopped when she was in that control room, and she was like, "We need the key. We have to protect ourselves." At that point, that's when. Uh, I was <laughs> well, like, she's a bad guy. <laughs> well, I don't know if she turned you and went, well, she's going to be evil, isn't she? <laughs> like, I knew they were going to set up with a Mother Ginger, was it? That's the name. Madam Ginger, what was her name? Mother Ginger. Was it Mother Ginger? Yeah. I mean, what the fuck? Richard E. Grant was in there. Do you realize who he was? Richard no. E. Grant? He was that. I don't know who that is. Richard E. Grant? Oh, God, do you remember in Doctor Who, the guy who was the snowman guy? He was like, hello. Him. No, I don't remember. God, Richard, e. Richard E. Grant is a really big actor, and if you saw his picture, you'd be like, "Oh, it's Richard E. Grant. He's in like four weddings and a funeral." And like, I don't think I'd stand there and go, "Oh, it's Richard yeah, E. Grant." Yeah, you would. I don't, I don't know. Hundred percent, you would. You'd know who he is. Like, it's just like Morgan Freeman was in it. Like, oh, I was yeah, thinking, yeah. what the fuck? Helen it's Mirren's in it, and he's a Kira Knightley, obviously. It was said like loads of big names, and like the, even her dad is a big name. I can't remember his name, but I know he's in the Three oh, Musketeers he's very big and stuff. So. He? He's he's in a he's in a BBC drama. And I can't remember his name, but just put up a text here that says he's got his name. And you can find it. What did you think of how the story went, like from start, middle, finish? Um, start was okay. Like, I mean, when started at her. Uh, being all scientific with her brother, then going off and do a party for Christmas Eve. And then it was that breakdown from start to middle where they went from the party, getting a gift, and then going to the four realms. Mm. That for me was a bit clunky because it was like, it kind of was like Narnia. But then you think, what, like this realm is in this guy's house. Like how did, she, how did the mother, uh, when you find out later on, how did the mother create them? How did that land yeah, exist? Isn't that what most 
children's films are like. No, because you know, Narnia you know didn't. Really they didn't. They didn't create the land. The land was created already. There was already inbuilt law. But then they had referenced that the mother had made it. The mother had made them. The mother had created all them. So I was like, I'm confused. Is like, it? What? It's own independent film, or has it led on from a film? That's its own independent film, Disney made. So it's not like a. Like it's not a... carried on from anything, no. All oh, right. Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't think so. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't. Don't think so. I thought. A bit clunky for me. I liked it. See, I really like like magical fantasy. Like, I love stuff like that. Like they threw a lot of money into it because the the CGI and everything is amazing. Yeah. And it looked. Gorgeous. It was like it was. flawless, like none of the creatures looked out of place or anything like that. It looked really good. I think so, was, except for Richard E. Grant's hands. There was there Those was finger gloves. <laughs> there was one bit, you know, you know when she was um when she got locked away and then she had the rope and she jumped down. Mm. You know when she was stood up there? Like I thought that looks like a really bad green screen at mm. that point. And that was the only bit where I was a bit like, that looks a bit shitty. That looks yeah. like a college project. Nice. But other than that, it all looked pretty good. It, did, it looked, it looked pretty good. Yeah, visually, it was pretty good. I knew what it, was, it knew what it wanted to be. I knew what it wanted to show. The only weird thing is though, that the villains later on, the iron toys, iron soldiers, the tin soldiers, tin soldiers, are that, right? Them. Why were they tin and like walking like Cybermen? Because all of them were toys that got turned into. People or whatever, and they uh, talk. Yeah, I thought that as and well. And I was thinking, like, why, why are they, they the villains? Ones? Yeah, why, why are they the like only that? ones that look like toys? Because they're hollow in the middle, or whatever the, the person said. And I was just like, I don't know. Right, but then also when she got turned into a toy, spoilers. When Kieran gets turned back into a toy, why did all of the other villains just? Why did the Tin Men just stop? Why did they just break? Because their creator died. Why not? Why didn't they die when her mum died? Because she created them all. Doesn't really make sense to me. I was yeah, a bit like, that, that bit didn't make sense. But I suppose it I mean, was a way they, of stopping it, though. If they it? stopped and then realised who the fuck they were, or like, didn't or listened to the Queen at the time or whatever, that would have been a bit more. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, stop being evil instead of just stopping automatically and just turning back into toys. That's that what just you fell mean, over. Yeah. No, I agree. Like it was a bit weird that they just all died. <laughs> I would say a solid 6 out of 10. I would say if you like cartoons, if you like kids films, then you'd probably like it. If you like more like complex films or like interesting things that are aimed more at adults, you probably wouldn't like it. <laughs> um, or if you've got kids, take them to go see them. That's what I would say. Hmm. Yeah, like, if, you're, if you're into Disney films. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm, I'm into Disney and I love magical stuff. I love all things like that. So I did still like it. Obviously... I mean, I think with any kids film, the story isn't usually going to be amazing. <laughs> well, you say that, but some of the best movies of our childhood, we still watch now, like Matilda and stuff like that. That's oh, a great yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, you think, true. oh, that's great. That's such an original piece. That, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. E.T., that's a kid's film. You think, <laughs> wow, that is a great fucking film. Yeah, that's true. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Nightmare Before Christmas, again, so original. Well, Disney? most Disney films don't have the best story. Well, you say it, that. What about <laughs> Toy Story 3? What about... More okay. Honor? What about Coco? I mean, you can't just oh, say you can't just say our oh, movies nowadays are can't be original right? because they all are still doing it. Disney are doing it. Disney are knocking it out of the park. But then this just felt a little bit lazy, but look gorgeous. Okay. If, if you like style over substance <laughs> and you like kids films, go yes. see it. Yeah. But definitely. if you don't, then don't go see it. Go see. Uh, uh, Harry Potter, go see the new Fantastic Beasts it's out on Friday. Yes. Enjoy yourself. We'll Magic. be reviewing that as well, won't we? Yes, yeah, so I will. That's going to be a half an hour because this has been 14 minutes and I didn't I know, care gonna, about the fucking film. <laughs> I'm going to have to try and put so, it down. <laughs> so, the actual film I want to see, that's going to be like an hour long or something. We'll have to cut this down. That's Six fine. out of as ten. As long as you make there me we'll look good and understand that I know what film is and everything, that's absolutely fine. I rate 6 out of 10. That's five out my of ten. rating. Yeah, Eric rates 5 out of 10. There we go. Should see it if you like that kind of genre. There we go. You may go home now. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone. I am exhausted. My makeup is melting off my face. My hair is atrocious. But I haven't vlogged today because it's been so busy. I've been working from 9 o'clock till 3 o'clock doing makeup constantly without a break. I didn't get a break. I am absolutely knackered. Um, but it was so good, I really enjoyed doing it and it's all for a good cause. It's basically a bridal photo shoot 
in aid of charity for St Oswald's which is a hospice up here in Newcastle and the reason I was really happy that I got to work with it is because St Oswald's actually looked after my granddad when he was in his last stages last stages of bowel cancer before he passed away and so that's quite important to me um my granddad if you don't know my granddad was basically my dad he brought me up he looked after me and he was the father figure in my life so it was quite a nice way for me to get involved and help out I was the makeup artist for the day I did five different makeup looks um on three different models who were all wonderful there was the florist which was I think I'm not sure how you pronounce it but chipping green florists I think that's what they're called or GYP um and green florists who are also local to the area. They, I believe they are the ones who organised it all, so well done to them. There was two different hairstylists, um, which was Very You Hair, who was Hannah, and there was Love Hair by Nikki. Um, also, two very talented hairstylists. The hair looked amazing. And the photographer was from Wild Hearts Photography, who was also brilliant, really, really nice. And I'm just really happy with how it went. I love all the makeup looks that I did. I do have some, um, I guess, sneak peek photos just that I took on my phone of the makeup looks um, while they were getting ready, which are over on my professional social media. If you don't follow me over on my makeup artist and beautician page, please do. It's Bex Beauty MUA over on Instagram and just Bex Beauty over on Facebook. And anything about my work will be over on there. I am sitting down now and my back is killing me because when you're doing makeup you're kind of always a little bit hunched over like reaching people sitting in a chair like reaching for their face so my back is killing me so yeah forgive me for not uh vlogging today I couldn't I obviously couldn't vlog while I was there because I was working um but yeah I enjoyed it <laughs> and hopefully it'll be hopefully there'll be a bit more of a fun day tomorrow and I know I've got quite a busy weekend ahead as well so there'll be lots to vlog then Oh my god, I hope you guys can hear me because I didn't bring my wind muff thing out. But look how many geese are here. There's so many. There's just so many. Keep still. I can't reach your back if you're jumping at me. Oh. Yeah, good boy. Come on then. If you're wondering why I use one of these leaders that I know lots of people hate. I only use it in certain areas that I'm very in control of and I'm very aware of the area and I know exactly how many dogs are here. I don't ever usually like to use these but I only use them in certain areas. I would never use these for example on a street where there's a road and don't worry he's very safe here. Hello everyone, I'm on my way to meet some friends. We are going to go to the Great British Cupcakery which is on the quayside and I'm currently walking towards it now and it's apparently so Instagrammable and gorgeous and I can't wait to show you it. from the Great British Cupcakery. That's a bit of a mouthful that. I've got to like think about my whole sentence before I say it. Oh, are you sneezing? Did you have a sneeze? Did you have a cute little sneeze? Yay, you good girl. I might as well leave the camera this way now. 
because you look cute. You look cute. I'm going to wrap these presents for our friend. It's his birthday tomorrow and I can show you these because he will have opened them or we will have given him them before the vlog goes up on Monday. But to be honest, I really don't think he watches my vlogs. And if you do, Ross, if you do watch my vlogs, then why the hell don't you give me comments? Come on. If anyone's wondering where Charlie is, because he's not often upstairs with me. He likes to cuddle into my nana downstairs. Um, he's a bit of a nana's boy and he just loves to sit, sit down there. And I don't like to force him to follow me around everywhere, so I'll just leave him. But you, you're a mummy's girl, aren't you? And you're all excited because I've been out all day and I've come home and you're like, yay, mummy's home! Apparently when my car pulled on the drive, um, my, I walked in and my nana was like, did you hear her? And I was like, what, what did you do? And she was like, she sat there and she howled, like absolutely howled her head off when my car pulled on the drive. And I was like, oh, doodle. You little bum wag, look at your little bum wobble. Are you bum wobbling? You want a bum scratch? <laughs> I just love her. Again, hairs all over Ross's presents. Look at you. It's now Sunday and I'm sorry I didn't vlog as much as I would have wanted to yesterday but it was my friend's birthday who doesn't really do the whole social media like photos and videos kind of thing so I didn't want to I suppose impose too much by pretty much shoving a camera on everyone's face so we had a really lovely evening we saw Fantastic Beasts 2 which we are conflicted on aren't we Eric yes it was more like um like, the actual film itself was beautiful. It looked really good. I just realised I wasn't even in shot there. Um, like, it looked gorgeous. The magic was amazing. But there was, like, some... What's the word? Continuity? Continuity. Yes. Issues. Um, and timing issues. Which I think we'll talk about in another video. Because we are actually getting ready to leave at the moment. So we don't have time to sit and talk about a film. But, um... We are actually getting ready to go to Sunderland Illuminations today. It is the last day that it's on. And I've actually ne never been before. And apparently Eric has. As a kid? Yes. Apparently when you went when you were little. I, I, I can't remember <laughs> it. I just told my mum and dad then. They said, the last time that we went, Kirsty was sick. Dad went for a red light because Kirsty was sick. Please pull this over. And I don't remember it whatsoever. So I must have been about... <laughs> You know, Very 17, young. 18. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Kirstie is Eric's sister, by the way. Um, so yeah, we're going to go there. I've never, ever been. At least I don't think I have. I definitely don't remember ever going. And it's basically like a light show inside Roker Park. I think it's a light show. Would you call it a show? I don't know. I think uh, it's just light displays. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll get some videos while I'm there, of course. And that's going to be our Sunday evening. It's quite late, as you can tell, like, the light's on. It's pretty dark outside. Well, actually, no. Like, it looks like there's light peeping from around the curtain, but it's definitely, like... It's a torch. It's definitely dark. <laughs> wow. It looks like... That looks so stunning. Star far away. It's actually the moon. It's the reflection on the sea. I didn't bring my wind muff. I should have brought my wind muff. Muff!
I hope you all enjoyed this week's weekly vlog. I know it's been really, really long, but it's just because it's been such a busy week and I hope you don't mind and you will have been able to skip the longer talky bits if you needed to. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to see more like this, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!